Hey guys, Veteran Outdoorsman here again. <clears throat> I'm gonna say, well, this is a an archery video, and this is the second time he's done done one in the series, and he doesn't have a bow in his hand. Well, I'm getting everything set up. So first, we talked about the importance of a higher FOC, um, and and those sorts of things. Now we're going to talk about the ins and outs, different things you need to have to be able to do this process. Now I'm going to put a link to a very useful video in the in the description, and that is Ranch Ferry just put out a video, Troy Fowler, he just put out a video on tuning with traditional archery. Um, He's going to have an extremely high FOC setup when he gets done. He's got something like 375 grains up front, something something like that. <clears throat> He's going to have a very, very high FOC. Um, with a 26 and a half or 27 inch arrow or something like that. I mean, it, it's crazy. But, but when it hits something, it's going to go through like it wasn't even there. But I'm going to talk about today the types of tuning you need to be aware of, different adjustments and things you can do with your recurve or longbow. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a self bow, a standard uh, reflex deflex longbow, a hill style D shaped longbow, um, a static recurve. Uh, standard recurve it, it doesn't matter these are adjustments that you can make to help with the tuning process and then we're going to go in a little bit into the equipment this is going to be a longer video but this is something that's very important and in the next video I'll have a bow in my hand and I'll walk through some of the steps do some shooting and, and, and show you what I do um but we're just going to kind of talk about the process, and then the next video we'll actually go through the process. Somewhat, we're not going to go through every step. It would take it would take a long time. And I do everything a little bit different. That's why I'm going to uh, link Troy Fowler's video because he goes a little more in depth. He does it um, a more precise method, and it's certainly the way I recommend. Um, and it's the way that I'm going to when I set up my bow later. Because um, I want to get somewhere between 650 and 700 grains as the goal. Right now I'm at about 625, about 22% FOC. I'm happy with that. I want to get over 650 um, with single bevel broadheads. I want to get my FOC, keep my FOC around 20%, if at all possible. Um, but accuracy is the goal. And I found a hand load that, <coughs> that shoots very well. And I want to stick with that for this season. And then my next build will be a slightly heavier um, build. So there's some things that you need to pay attention to. I'm going to assume you already have a bow. If you do not have a bow, um, and you're trying to figure out, you know, what you want, think, go to Three Rivers Archery, look at those, talk to some archery guys. I would recommend for someone starting to get a takedown recurve with removable limbs, um, and there's a reason I say that. Somebody's going to say, well, it's a takedown. Of course it has removable limbs. No. I had a Ben Pearson takedown two-piece where the riser actually broke in half. And that, that's, especially for longbows, that's not horribly uncommon. Um, this was a recurve, but get a three-piece takedown where you can remove the limbs. There's a reason for that. You want to be able to start with lighter poundage and go to heavier poundage. Um, <clears throat> when you start with the lighter poundage, you know, you might start with something that 
that you're not really going to hunt with, 25, 30 pounds, that's fine. We're not going to go really into depth with that. I would recommend um, looking at Samix offerings. They used to have the Samix Sage and Journey. I know that those models, they've got similar models now, but they've changed a little bit. Um, looking at something like that. But for the rest of you, and get your bow, then come back to this. The rest of you that already have a bow, we're not talking 3D archery. We're not talking shooting spots indoors. We're talking about hunting. Um, will some of these things apply? Sure. But this is going to be geared toward hunting. So if you want to learn how to tune your target bow, um, you may get some things out of this for sure. But this is, this is not 100% the process for you. Although I do want to get the most accurate combination possible you may be able to get away with a lighter setup less foc things like that um but i don't shoot target archery i don't really have any attention to i may shoot a 300 round here and there just for fun i may shoot a 3d around here and there for fun but it's all for practice for bow hunting so that's what we're going to talk about so now that that long, boring introduction is done, let's talk about the different things that you can do to tune your bow, the bow itself. And when we get into shooting the bow, I'll talk about what it, uh, and we'll touch on it a little bit today, but I'll talk about what it, what you can do to tune your arrow to make it fly straight, things like that. So... <clears throat> one thing that you first of all you've got your bow you've got it unstrung you want to hold it up you want to make sure that the limbs aren't twisted you want to inspect all the limbs make sure there's no cracks no delamination anything like that that's first next you want to make sure um that your string is unfrayed, etc. Okay, you're gonna want a knocking tool, unless you're using a a um, a tight on knock. You know, you're you're tying some thread, some serving material, or whatever you're using a that type of a knock. That's a served knock. That's fine. Um, I use a standard brass knock. So you want a knocking tool. You want one that can remove and install the knocks um you can get a tool that just installs them you want one that will remove them as well because you want to be able to loosen them adjust it etc so you'll want that um brace height brace height is very important your bow well, unless you built it yourself, your bow will come with a recommended brace height. For a recurve, it's probably going to be somewhere between seven and eight and a half inches. For a long bow, somewhere between six and seven and a half inches. Uh, and those are just general numbers. <coughs> you can have it in any part of that range. The higher your brace height in that range, the more pounds you're going to be pulling, the lower the brace height in that range, the faster the bow should shoot because you have a longer power stroke. Um, you'll find as you twist your bow, bow string to raise the brace height that there will be a sweet spot in there where it just feels right. It just feels perfect. For me, that tends to be toward the maximum end of the brace height. Um, for my Damon Howitt, I think my max brace height's around seven and a half, and I, and I'm right at that. It shoots great. It it just it's got less vibration, etc. But you're going to find a sweet spot. It may be toward the low end. It may be toward the high end. You're going to find a sweet spot. Um. But that's also going to depend on what weight of arrow you shoot, etc. 
So keep that in mind. Adjusting your brace height can help you when you have slightly weak or slightly strong spines. You're going to be shooting bare shaft at a fixed target, and you're going to be reading knock left, knock right. And you're going to look at that. Okay, this is a little weak. This is a little strong, etc. And you can make minute adjustments by adjusting your brace height. Um, if you're a little knock weak, or if you're a little weak spined, you can adjust your brace height in, make it less. And that can correct it. Minor adjustments, okay? And you're only going to want, you know, a few twists here and there. Try it out. See what happens. For if you're... If you... Sorry. If, if you're weak-spined, you're going to want to bring it out. You're going to make your brace height um, more. If you're strong-spined, you want to... Sorry. If you're weak spine, you want to lower your poundage, so you want to make it less. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed it up. I was right the first time. If your spine is a little stiff, you want to make your brace height a little bit more. If you're already at the max of your brace height, there's other things you can do. Adjust your point weights, etc. Um, this this will make minor adjustments here and there. You're just a little one way, a little the other. Obviously, your knock point up and down. If you're shooting knock high, you'll lower your knock point. If you're shooting knock low, you'll raise it. A recommendation, and I've seen this on other videos, a recommendation is to start a little bit high. Because if you're too low, your arrow can bounce off the shelf and give you a false knock high. And I've had knock high readings when my knock was below the shelf. Obviously, I'm knock low, but when the arrow hits, it hits knock high because of the way it bounces off the shelf. So start just a little bit high. Your plate thickness. Well, what's plate? Your strike plate. The plate that you have on the riser of your bow. You've got your shelf, and then you've got your plate. You want a strike plate on your on you. You don't want your arrow just riding straight on the riser. You want a strike plate. It protects your bow somewhat. Um, it also helps with the paradox of the bow. If you have a bow with a flat shelf, you want to put a toothpick, a matchstick, a piece of Q-tip, something underneath your rug to give a little bit of a raise. Again, it helps. You want less contact. As little contact as possible. You want to. You don't want the arrow riding on the side of the riser. You don't want it riding completely on the shelf. You'll get some weird tuning readings if you have those scenarios. So you want a strike plate, and you want your shelf. You want a rounded or or peaked shelf. Again, those those are things that are easy to do. You don't need to buy fancy. Um, Rests and, and, and such to put on your bow. Go to Walmart and get some adhesive backed Velcro. That's the right size to fit on your <clears throat> on your shelf. Put that on there for your rug. Works great. You can also use a piece of it for your strike plate. Um, make it about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide. There's a reason for that. To make adjustments, if your spine is too weak, if you bring your your center shot a little further, a little further to the left for a right-hander, a little further to the right for a left-hander, you're accommodating for that weaker spine, and it'll straighten out your arrow flight. So... You'll want some pieces of cardboard, um, duct tape works in a pinch, some double stick tape, I recommend that. Something to stick behind that plate so that you can adjust. It, 
make a little bit of adjustment in and out. Um, you're going to be starting with longer arrows. You're going to be starting with some weaker spines. So you can always, it's always easier if you start slightly weak to adjust. If you start too strong, you're not going to be, you're not going to want to file on your riser. That can be very unsafe. You're not going to want to do that to adjust for a strong spine. But if you start with a weak spine, you can always add a little bit, build out your your riser um, so that you can accommodate for that weaker spine. I find that a slightly weaker spine, when properly accommodated with a, with a thicker strike plate, tends to be more forgiving and tends to fly very well. Um... Dr. Ed Ashby in one of the one of the uh, one of the videos I watched. Um, actually, it was just an audio clip. So, sorry, one of the audio clips that I listened to talked even with a compound that he likes to have the his center, sh you know, not perfect center center shot, but you know, an eighth of an inch to the weak side. Um, because he finds with a weaker spine, you've got a little more forgiveness and whatnot. So think about those things. When you finally got your bow tuned in, you want to take down some numbers. You put a piece of masking tape on your bow, on one of your bow limbs, and you write these things down. And then cover it with a piece of, uh, of cellophane tape so it doesn't go away. You can... You can write it down, fold it up, put it in your quiver or whatever, but you want to keep these things. You want to write down what your brace height was, what your um, plate thickness was, etc. So that when it comes time to replace your string, when it comes time to put a new rest, different things on your bow, you can get back as close to that as possible. And it makes, though you still need to go through the process again, it makes it quicker you're going to start really close to what you had before. You want to write down your string material. Um, is it fast flight? Is it Dacron? Is it a Flemish twist string? Is it an endless loop string? Is it 12 strands, 14 strands, 16 strands, etc.? What kind of serving did you have on it? Did you have... Um, did you have spider leg silencers? Did you have string leeches? Did you have beaver balls? Did you have the big fuzz balls? Whatever, as your silencers. Did you use a brass knock? Did you use a sewn on knock? Etc. All those things will affect your tune. If you go from. Did you shoot. Split fingers. Did you shoot three under? Did you anchor with this finger, this finger, or this finger? Those things can affect how your arrow flights. Did you shoot straight up? Did you can't? Etc. A lot of guys, this traditional archery is a hobby that they pick up and then they put down and they pick up and they put down. If you've got a bow that you've tuned really well, and then you decide to go back to shooting your compound or your crossbow or whatever for a couple of years. And you will go back and pick it up. If you've got all that stuff written down, it's a whole lot easier to get back into it and start shooting it well. It's no different than if you're hand loading for a rifle or a shotgun or a handgun. And you write down what your load is. What primer did you use? What case... Did casing did you use? What bullet did you use? What grain weight? All those things. It's the same thing. You want to write all that stuff down. You're going to have to replace a string on your bow from time to time. You want to get the brace height in. When you, a tip, when you replace a string on your bow, no matter what it is, no matter if they say it's been pre-stretched or whatever, put it on. Twist it down to the maximum brace height. Leave it sit for a couple of hours. Um, you know, put it on a gun rack. Leave it, leave rest, you know, don't ever leave 
a traditional bowl, leaning up against the corner or something like that. Lay it on the floor in a safe spot. It's not going to get run over or whatever. But leave it braced up for a few hours. Go shoot it. Don't worry about tuning. Don't worry. Grab some arrows that are safe to shoot in it. Over 7 grains per pound. Um, preferably 10. They'll be a lot quieter. And shoot 50 times. Unbrace it, you know, unstring it. Next day, take it, go through the same type of thing. Get the string stretched out. Then start doing your tune. You know, if you get that at the max brace height, you let it sit for a little bit, you go shoot it 50 times, check your brace height. It's going to change by anywhere from a quarter of an inch to an inch. Then you add some more twist to your string, get it back up to where you want it to be. That's a process. You know, just like what a range phrase is, you compound, you change the strings, everything changes, you gotta through it all go through it all over again. Same with a recurve, same with a long bow, you gotta go through it all over again. You're going to be pretty close. But you've got to get your brace height right, you've got to get your string twisted right, you've got to get all that stuff right. You know, on things you're writing down, write down how far do you have your silencers from tip to tip, bottom and top. Your knock point, was it an eighth above center? Three sixteenths, three eighths? All, I've heard all the way up to three quarters on guys that shoot three under. Write that down. It's, is it perfect? No, but it will get you close it will make this much much easier if you have an ILF or a DAS type system or a DALA or whatever whatever it is if you have an adjustable type system um how did you have your tiller set were you a little you know, was it even tiller, top and bottom limb? Did you have more space at the bottom than the top, etc.? Write all that stuff down. Um, you know, maybe you've got a, a, a bow with a burger buttonhole and you decided that you're using a, a, a plunger style to adjust. Count how many threads are out because that thing, them things can come loose. You want to be able to get back into tune really quick. So count your threads. Shoot. It comes loose. Shoot it a couple of times. Once you've reset it. Make minor adjustments. You're going to be really, really close. But just by counting threads, you can still be an eighth turn off. Something like that. Make your adjustments. But you get back in really quick. You know, like I said, where you canting your bow. Where All of those things. Now this is something else to think about as we're getting ready to go into the shooting process of, of tuning the bow. What is your goal? Do you just want a reasonably heavy arrow that flies good and you can take hunting. Do you want a heavy, high FOC, you know, over 20% with a really solid monolithic um, single bevel broadhead that you can do anything with? You can drive through elk, moose, whatever. Do you want something in between? You just want something to go around and play it hard and actually be able to hit what you're aiming at. <coughs> Maybe take deer hunting here and there. That's fine. But think about that. What grain weights do you want to shoot? Um, my goal, I wanted to have at least 300 grains up front. 
with point and insert, now I've got about 312, something like that, which, you know, that's, that's right in line. My next goal is I want to get over 650 grains, so up front, I'm going to want around... Three hundred fifty to four hundred grains, something up front. So what I'm going to do with my next, instead of a factory aluminum insert, I'm going to start with a steel insert, and it's somewhere seventy-five to hundred grains, and then I'm going to adjust from there with my point weights. I recommend you you're going to want at least two hundred grain broadheads. So you're going to want a 200 grain point or heavier. And someone will say, why? Because when you get into the 200 grain and heavier broadheads, you get into thicker steel. You get into better steel. You're getting into, most of them are carbon steel, tool grade type steel. They, <coughs> they take an edge very well. They hold an edge very well. <laughs> and they hold up to hard impact. They don't curl when you hit bone. Those are important things. We're not shooting speed demons, folks. We're shooting longbows and recurves. You're not going to be shooting 320 feet per second with your hunting arrows. You're going to be shooting somewhere between 140 and 190 feet per second. And 190 would be really fast. If you get in the 600 grain range and you're shooting a 55 to 60 pound bow that at 28, but you're drawing it, well, it's not even go there because it's, yeah, no, that'll work. You're drawing it back to 29, 30 inches. So you're really shooting 60 to 65 pounds. You could get... You could still, with that 600 grain arrow, you may get close to 200 feet per second. But if you, you shoot through a crony, you're shooting 145, who cares? You're going to practice. You're going to shoot it in the basement. You're going to shoot it in the backyard. You're going to go to the range. You're going to practice. Do this now. There's a reason I'm putting this video out now. That is because this is early June. Bow season for a lot of guys. If you're going to elk hunt, bow season is going to start, what, the end of August, first of September. For deer hunters, it's going to start anywhere from the first of September to the first of October. So you've only got a few months. Get your stuff ready. Start ordering your arrows and, and your points and all that stuff now, or it will not be available when it comes time. Last year, I pushed the envelope pretty quick. I didn't order my stuff till the end of July, 1st of August. And I had to kind of hodgepodge some stuff together and buy some components that I really wasn't exactly what I wanted, but they worked and tune accordingly. And that's with my compound. You got to do a lot more tweaking with a recurve. But the most important thing here is have fun. If you start to get frustrated and you start to get upset because things just aren't quite going right, put your target away, unstring your bow, go watch TV, go hang out with the wife, go play with the kids. Go throw a ball at the dog. Go take a walk around the block. Whatever it takes. Come back a couple hours later. Come back the next day. Come back on the weekend. Whatever it is. That's why you're doing this now. So you have time. It can get very frustrating. Especially if you're new to traditional archery. And all you've ever shot is your compounds. And you're used to taking it to the shop. Having them square everything up, going home, running a few arrows through it and make a couple adjustments to your rest, maybe a little bit of a knock adjustment, adjust your sights and you're ready to go. That is not going to happen with a stick bow unless you're just extremely lucky or extremely gifted. 
you start blowing a few shots. You've shot 20, 30 times, and all of a sudden, you're getting one that flies knock high, one that flies knock low, one that shoots weak, one that shoots strong, and then one that's dead on. You're getting tired. You're not perfect. I know you think you are. I know you think that you can shoot a, three, a perfect 300 every single time with your long bow, with wood arrows, and shooting split fingers. I get that. You're human. Relax. Take a break. Go get a glass of tea. Watch your favorite TV show. You know, Magnum P.I. is on. Go watch that. Relax. Calm down. Let your muscles recover a little bit. Go back to it. A big tip that I'm going to give you is don't overbow yourself. And guys, that doesn't matter if you're brand new or if you've been shooting traditional archery for 40 years. Don't overbow yourself. There are a lot of guys I know that hunt. And it's kind of scary. That bow hunt with traditional archery gear that just refuse to shoot anything under 60, 65 pounds. And hey... Some of those guys, they're good. Some of those guys are really overbowed, and they'd be much better suited to a 45 or 50 pound bow. But they just refuse to do it because they're convinced that you got to have 65 pounds and you've got to be able to shoot through telephone poles. Well, that's just not going to happen. If all you can shoot is a 40 pound comfortably, as long as that meets your state requirements, set it up the way I'm going to show you how, take my advice, practice, shoot, find your maximum range, 15 yards, 20 yards, 25 yards, go out there and have fun, go out there and kill a deer, send me a picture. There's been plenty of deer killed with 35-pound bows. There's been plenty of deer killed with 95-pound bows. I get that. You're going to be hunting whitetails, maybe pronghorns, maybe elk, maybe feral hogs. You know, everything that I mentioned can easily be killed with a 50 to 55-pound bow but can be taken with a 40 to 45 as long as you have the right arrow and the right broadhead. Um, so my recommendation, if you shoot your 50, 55 really well, don't worry about going up in poundage, but I want to go moose hunting next year. Set you up a 650, 700 grain arrow and go moose hunting with your 50, 50 pound recurve. The moose isn't going to know what hit it. It, is, it isn't going to turn around and say, Oh, oh you only had 50 pounds. If you're tuned right, you've got a sharp broadhead, you've got enough arrow mass, it's not going to make a difference. My recommendation, no matter what your pound weight is, this is all going to come into play when we start shooting. My recommendation, no matter what your pound weight is, to shoot at least 10 grains of arrow weight per pound that would be a 400 grain arrow for a 40 pound bow a 600 grain arrow for a 60 pound bow if you really want to get super deep penetration and you want to get more into that bone breaking threshold getting up around 12 grains per pound is going to get you closer to that um you shoot 12 grains per pound with a with a 60 pound bow, you know, it'd be 600 plus 120, right? So you're shooting 720 grains. 50 pound, you're probably closer to 650, something like 55 pound. 50 pound, you would be 500 plus, so you'd be right around 600 grains. 55, you're going to be around 650, some, somewhere in there, 650, 670, something in that. Um, so 12 grains per pound is a really good starting point for heavier game. Um, 
but a minimum, I would say, of 10 grains per pound. Maybe a lady watching this. Somebody gave her a 45 pound recurve. That's 45 at 28. She draws it to 25. So she's only really, let's be conservative. Or not even be good. Let, let's say you, you lose two to three pounds. Let's say you just lost two pounds per, per inch. So three inches, two pounds, that's six pounds. So you're, it's 45 pounds. You're really only shooting 39. But you can shoot a 26, 26 and a half inch arrow. And you can shoot it at 500 grains and get some serious FOC. So your penetration is going to be there. You know, don't worry about it. You you convince yourself that you get a 30 inch draw, but you realize that you you got a but you got a 31 inch arrow and you get four inches hanging off when you when you're at full draw. Hey, there's no let off on these things. Your elbow is going to bend a little bit different. Your wrist is going to bend a little bit different. Don't get hung up on that stuff. Ranch Ferry, I think, shoots a 28 or 28 and a half inch draw on his compound. He's only shooting, I think he's shooting a 26 and a half inch arrow on his longbow. So his draw on his longbow, he's probably only shooting 25 inches, something like that. Don't worry about it. Maybe you'll lose a little bit of trajectory. With it. The whole deal is have fun. You know what you can do to adjust your bow. I'm not going to go into all of the ins and outs. We talked about it already. The next time we meet, I'm going to have a target set up. I'm going to shoot an out of tune arrow. I'm going to shoot an in tune arrow. I'm going to discuss more of what it takes to tune. And then we're going to go into the build process of the arrow itself. You know what your tune is. You know what length arrow, what spine and everything. And how do you set it up? How do you fletch it? How do you um, come up with the right broadhead, etc.? So this is going to be a three, four part series. So I hope you've gotten something out of this so far. Just talking about what you can do to tune your bow, what kind of tools you need, things like that. You need a bow stringer, get a bow stringer. And somebody's going to say, well, I always string mine by hand. Well, most guys do until they twist the limb. They say, well, I bow hunted with recurves for 40 years and I've never twisted a limb. Okay, I got it. You're perfect. That's fine. For the rest of us humans out there, get a bow stringer. Get a bow stringer. You send me a nasty ram and say, well, you know, my bow's out of tune, this and that, and I find out you get a twisted limb, I'm going to laugh at you. Have I strung bows by hand? Sure. Will I do it again? Sure. Get a bow stringer. They're cheap. It's just a, it's a, a piece of parachute cord with a piece of rubber on it and a loop. They're cheap. You can use them for multiple bows. Get a bow stringer. Learn to use it. Buy two. Put one in your quiver. Put one in your in your bow tackle box. It can save you thousands of dollars keeping you from twisting a limb. Somebody's gonna say, Well, I've never spent that much money on a bow. You haven't been shooting our you haven't been shooting trad very very long, have you? You can easily spend $1,500 on a really nice bow, or you can be like me and have two, $3,000 worth of bows sitting in various parts of your house. This is an addicting sport, folks. It is a lot of fun. 
you're going to get to where you want to shoot small game with it. You're going to get to where you want to hunt with it instead of your rifle or whatever. It's a lot of fun. You may even get like me and sell your compound. I've got a compound now. I've got a couple of, of crossbows too. But at one point, I didn't have any of that. I'd sold all of it and had nothing but recurves and longbows. Well, you know what? I bought some re I bought some crossbows. I bought some, I bought a compound. I still got all my recurves. I still got all my longbows. And I'll still pick up another one for a good price. This is addicting, but it's a lot of fun. But make it fun. If you get frustrated, walk away from it for a while. Come back. This is Veteran Outdoorsman. God bless you. We'll see you all in the next video, and we'll start slinging arrows.